Welcome to Magic Minutes by MGIC, mortgage industry training that helps you expand your knowledge and skills. Before we get started, take a moment to review our legal disclaimer. MGIC is providing this as general information based on current industry guidelines at the time of this recording. It is always advised that you seek the guidance of your own compliance and regulatory departments. Hello, and welcome to our series on evaluating and calculating borrowers' income. I'm Sandra Sweeney, Senior Customer Trainer and Program Designer for MGIC. This is part three in our series, and today we'll discuss how to calculate variable income. In this video, we'll look at the rules set by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac that you need to follow when evaluating variable income. And then I'll go over three examples of variable income calculations, including one that involves commission, one that includes bonus income, and an example featuring shift differential. So let's get started. In this session, we'll go over how variable income is different than fixed income in that it is not received at a predetermined amount or at a regular time, and therefore must be considered based on the history of receipt and the trending of income received. In order to do this evaluation, the agencies have provided us with some guidance. Here are the variable income rules in order to use variable income earnings as part of our qualifying income. A 24-month history is recommended. In no event should employment history be less than 12 months. Calculation of income is determined on whether income trend is consistent, increasing, or decreasing. Additional analysis is recommended when the income fluctuates more than 10% from year to year. What about income trending? Once again, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have provided the following guidance for income trends. If the amount of income trend is stable or increasing, the income should be averaged. If the trend is declining but has since stabilized, and there's no reason to believe the borrower will not continue to be employed at the current level, the lower amount of income must be used. If the income is declining, the income may not be stable. Additional analysis must be conducted to determine if any income should be used, but in no instance should it be averaged over the period where the decline occurred. You may wonder why sometimes you get different answers and varying income calculations out of underwriting. The answer is, this is an area of subjectivity due to the underwriter's analysis of the risk present throughout the entire loan file. Due to different circumstances in every loan file, the methodology of income calculation will not always follow the same path. Why is this? Remember the four C's? When assessing the overall risk of the file, we look into all of these areas, credit, capacity, capital, and collateral. Perhaps the underwriter is struggling with the income calculation and is on the fence on how to proceed. At that point, they might step away from the income or capacity section of the file and look for strengths or weaknesses in other areas. Let's take a look at two loan files and see how the overall risk present in the file plays into our ultimate decisions when it comes to calculating income. File number one, the credit report only includes one trade line, which consists of a credit card opened six months ago, but somehow we obtained an AUS approval. The capital section reveals a high LTV of 97% and the assets needed for the down payment and closing costs are coming from gift funds. The borrower doesn't have any skin in the game, so to speak, and could easily walk away from this transaction. Lastly, the appraisal identifies deferred maintenance at the subject property. Conversely, loan file number two is a file where the borrower has well-established credit with no derogatory account history. 
there is a history of savings and the borrower is using their own funds for the down payment. The LTV is a bit lower at 95% and the property value is well supported by the appraisal. File number one does not represent overall acceptable risk, whereas file number two would reflect low risk. Once the underwriter assessed the overall risk in the file, they would step back into the income section and be able to determine whether or not they wanted to take a more aggressive approach to the income calculation or entertain a guideline exception. For file number one, that would not be a file where the underwriter will feel comfortable stretching the limits of the guidelines. Whereas with the low overall risk in file number two, the underwriter might approve some exceptions. So we can see how each file tells a different story and therefore the outcome can differ as well. Let's now turn to our first example of variable income calculation. We are going to start with calculating variable income for a borrower who receives base pay plus commission. We need both base and commission income to qualify our borrower for the loan request. Taking a look at Harry Kamisha's verification of employment, Harry started his job as an auto sales agent for Speedy Auto Sales on April 13, 2018. The verification of employment indicates that he receives a base salary of $3,000 per month. Additionally, commission compensation is received, and although we tried to qualify the borrower with just the base income, it was not sufficient. So we need to also analyze the commission income. Let's see how this verification of employment translated into our MGIC worksheet. The worksheet shows that Harry has had a steadily increasing base income and that the 2022 and year-to-date average does support the current rate of $3,000 a month. So the base income looks well-supported, but what about the commission income? As you can see, the worksheet indicates that Harry's commission income decreased from 2021 to 2022 by 22.89% and then has gone back up in 2023 by 28.87%. Taking a look at how we might calculate this commission income. One approach would be to say that since the commission income has stabilized, we can take an average of all the commission income. This would result in a commission income of 4,653. However, we would not follow the variable income rules and therefore we would not want to use this approach. The second approach would be to seek to explain the income trends. So we obtained a letter of explanation from the employer indicating that the sole reason for the lower 2022 income was a shortage of inventory and that situation has now been resolved. The employer further indicates that the borrower's commission income should normalize to what it was in the past. With this letter of explanation and the assurance that the income has stabilized and the borrower's four-year history with this employment, we can use the lower of the two years or 2022 income and our commissions have been calculated as 4,042. Let's now take a look at our second variable income calculation example. Our second variable income calculation involves a borrower that is paid base plus bonus. Betty Bonash started her employment with Amazing Trends on April 20, 2021 as an analyst. The verification of employment indicates that she is paid $1,850 on a biweekly basis and shows a history of receipt of bonus income. It was noted in the remarks section of the verification of employment that bonus is paid for the previous year in the first quarter of the year. So taking a look at our corresponding MGIC worksheet, her base income appears to be well supported and we would have no issues using the base calculated income of 4,008. However, bonus income is needed in order to qualify. 
we see that the borrower has less than a 24 month history of receipt of bonus income. However, we know that it can be considered with at least a 12 month history. We do see something strange. The bonus income shows an increase year to date of 1,667%. How are we going to calculate the bonus income for this scenario? The top approach would be to simply take an average of all the bonus income received. The result would be $998 per month in bonus income. But wait, the bonus income year to date is all that the borrower will receive for 2023. Therefore, that would not be a correct approach. The second tactic would be to do some annualizing. We would select the A option on the worksheet instead of the Y option. And then this would take the total bonus income for 2023 and average it over a 12-month period. Then I believe we would feel comfortable taking a full month average of all the bonus income received for 2021, 2022, and 2023. The result would be $658 per month. Notice the difference between the two approaches. We went from 998 to 658 per month. Okay. Now for our last example of variable income calculation. In this example, we are going to be looking at a borrower who receives shift differential. Shift differential is extra pay employers may offer employees who work outside of standard hours, such as overnight and weekend shifts. Many employers make use of shift differential in order to incentivize workers to take on these less than ideal shifts. Shift differential is common in manufacturing, customer support, security, and healthcare jobs. Today, we will look at an example of a borrower who is a PRN registered nurse. As we can see from this printout from third party verification, the borrower has been employed as a PRN float registered nurse with this employer for almost 10 years. His rate of pay is listed as $48 per hour. However, the average hours worked is reflected as 20. The verification shows bonus and other income along with base pay. Verification date is December the 15th, 2022. Something does seem off when you look at the 2022 totals. As of the verification date, his total income is only 61760 and the trend in earnings is low. In addition, I would question if the income has been classified correctly. Is the bonus income truly bonus earnings? And the income classified as other needs to be identified. It looks like questions need to be asked. How does this look when we complete our income worksheet? Although we are told that his base pay is $48 per hour, we cannot use that to calculate the income due to the different shifts and hours that he works. We would indicate varies on the worksheet. Due to the low year-to-date income, we reached out to the borrower. He provided a letter of explanation indicating that he was out of work for two months in 2022 due to COVID. He also provided a year-to-date pay stub showing that his income is broken down into base plus night shift, which equaled the bonus income on the verification, and weekend pay, which equaled the other income on the verification. We also obtained a letter of explanation from the employer, verifying the dates that the borrower was absent for work and confirming that he had since returned to full-time employment. With that, we were able to take an average for base income as well as night and weekend differential. What we were not able to do is subtract the two months that he was out of work from the average. Due to variable income rules, we would have to average over the full period of time. Questions to ask Do the borrowers have a history? 
of earning variable income for 24 months. Has the income been trending about the same in the past 24 months? Take a moment to check your understanding. Do you know how these two statements should be completed? Variable income is generally considered stable if received for the past two years, but it cannot be considered if received for less than 12 months. Variable income that is declining requires documentation to support stability. Income should be calculated using an average of the lower of the two years. Remember, qualifying income must be reasonable, verifiable, consistent, stable, and likely to continue. Thank you for joining us for Magic Minutes. We hope this brief tutorial has made a difference for you. For more how-to videos, visit mgic.com training.